Brock University acknowledges the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land with protected by the dish with one spoon wampum agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, and acknowledging reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of Indigenous people. Good morning, and welcome to this session of Business Bridges, a live webinar series hosted by Goodman Group at Brock University. My name is Abdul Wahimi, and it's my distinct pleasure to serve as the director of Goodman Group here at Brock University. Goodman Group is a community-focused learning and development services provider that works to support professionals, businesses, and entrepreneurs pursuing growth through professional development certificate programs, executive education, consulting services, and startup support. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all to today's session as you take a break with us. This webinar series aims to provide 45 minute graders felt with insightful discussions on timely topics that are relevant to businesses and everyday lives led by award-winning Brock University faculty and leading industry experts, encouraging thoughtful debates while keeping us all feeling connected. Momentarily, I will introduce our distinguished speaker for today's session, but allow me to thank you all who have already submitted your questions at the time of registrations. And for those of you that are watching live, Right now, feel free to type in your questions into the chat feature, which is open now. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our speaker for today's session, and that's Dr. Julie Stevens. Julie is the special advisor to the president of Canada, at uh, Canada Games at Brock University. She leads all academic initiatives related to Brock's involvement with the 2022 Canada Summer Games in Niagara and it facilitates academic innovation through research, teaching, and community engagement. Julie is an associate professor in the Department of Sport Management and is the director of Center for Sports Capacity here at Brock University. Her current research focuses upon two unique but related aspects of sport. First, she examines sport and its impact upon a regional economy. Second, she champions sport and recreation as essential services and argues that a health equity lens is vital to ensure these services are available to all citizens in the community. Collectively, the economic and social impacts of sport are key elements of her work to connect the sport policy and economic and social community development. Welcome, Julie, to this session. Thank you very much, Abdul, and it's a pleasure to participate in the Goodman Group Business Breather webinar series. My presentation today will focus upon economic development and the potential of sport. I've researched the economic impact of various areas of sport, such as sport events and sport tourism, and building upon this work and research by other academics, I'm now expanding into the analysis of the overall contribution of sport to a regional economy, which extends far beyond this narrow sport event and sport tourism. My goal today is to frame sport within a broader economic perspective by introducing the concept of the active economy and planting a seed with the hope that you may give further consideration to how sport, recreation and wellness might drive economic prosperity in your community. The active economy may be a new concept to you and positioning sport, recreation and wellness at the center of an economic development strategy may be quite different from the traditional industries and businesses you consider in such planning exercises. But the potential you will gain, I believe, is quite immense. I'm already working on research studies and community engagement initiatives, and it is my mission to build an active economy model in Niagara. So a couple of housekeeping uh, comments before we begin. I'm not using a slide transition tool because of the share screens, so the slides will just sequence through and appear uh, in their entirety through our discussion. And the active economy includes sport, recreation and wellness. It's quite a mouthful, so at times I'll use the word sport, but please keep in mind and maybe imagine other areas of this new economic cluster that also uh, connect to recreation and wellness. 
So moving ahead, um, let's, let's look at this novel notion. And there are two learning objectives for the presentation today. The first is to identify key components of the active economy so you may better understand the framework itself. And the second learning objective is to increase your awareness so you may more fully consider how economic development in your community may benefit from an active economy view. Our agenda today, to begin with, we will discuss the definition of the active economy and its sectors in relation to an economic cluster model. We will review a few exemplars from research and reports to demonstrate how sport industry trends effectively connect to an active economy cluster and the potential that this provides existing and new actors along the expansive supply chain. And we will identify some simple first steps in building the active economy in your community or region. One note about acknowledgements of sources, I include some of these on slides and I have a full reference list at the end that I'm happy to share with anyone. So to begin, what is the active economy framework and how might the business of sport drive your community's vision and economic action plan? In other words, how do you get in the game? Well, the active economy is a new framework developed by Dr. David Finch and Dr. David Legg at Mount Royal University in Calgary. The framework is called active economy and includes a holistic or ecosystem view of the contribution of sport, recreation and wellness to community prosperity, according to four areas. And these areas are shown here as human prosperity, social prosperity, environment prosperity, and economic prosperity. Each area makes a valuable contribution to the overall community's prosperity. And there is a great deal of research in each of these areas that has over time informed policy. However, our discussion today will only focus on the economic prosperity area and highlights touch points where sport contributes to economic growth. Within the economic prosperity part of the active economy ecosystem, Finch and Legg expand upon the notion of an economic cluster that includes many characteristics of which some key elements are noted here. For example, an economic cluster is geographically defined. It draws upon complementary expertise. It involves a range of traditional sectors, which in this discussion is really important because it draws upon sectors you're probably most familiar with and connects into this sport ecosystem. It embraces collaboration and most importantly, it centers upon a competitive advantage. So what is the active economy and how is it defined by Finch and his colleagues? Well, the active economy is a concept that involves incorporating all organizations who participate in or contribute to improving individual and community well-being through the development and delivery of sport and active recreation experiences. And of course, it also includes wellness. So hence, we need to consider the goods and services a customer purchases in relation to the broad realm of sport experiences and the economic benefits generated anywhere along this supply chain. Hence, identifying the full range of businesses and their activities and processes needed to create these goods and perform these services is an important part of generating growth through this cluster model. Who is the active economy? The AE, as I call it, supply chain incorporates commercial, nonprofit, and public organizations and individuals who directly or indirectly contribute to these experiences. Knowing the breadth of the supply chain also raises the question of what is the value of an active economy? And there's some early work on this to give us direction. In terms of how much is the active economy, one source estimates that the global active economy is worth $3 trillion. So tremendous potential here. Within Canada though, Legg and Finch um, have conducted research on Calgary's active economy and found that it includes 4,000 enterprises, employs over 43,000 people, and generates 3.3 billion to the regional economy. Another question is, where is this active economy cluster? And, and you know, what does the active economy cluster include? This figure provides a visual representation of the cluster. 
the active economy incorporates 11 interdependent sectors and uh, they are fit within two macro level clusters, a delivery cluster and an enabling cluster. The breakdown in the overall cluster includes this delivery cluster of five sectors and they address organized sport, active recreation, active life, active tourism and sport betting. As you look at this model, you can begin to imagine all types of organizations that deliver these goods and services along the supply chain. Additionally, the enabling cluster involves the other six sectors, and these include active products and gear, active technology and accessories, design and infrastructure, health and wellness, media content, and professional services. Here too, you can begin to imagine all the organizations that contribute to the delivery sector organizations in the cluster. So now that we've covered some general background, the next part of the presentation looks at um, how you might begin to identify connections to for businesses and individuals within the active economy cluster. So basically, how can you learn to compete using this model? To start, it is helpful to view a few examples that demonstrate some Canadian industry statistics that touch upon the 11 sectors in the active economy. The top left draws upon a 2019 Canadian sport tourism report stating the value of the Canadian sport tourism industry was 7 billion that year. The top right draws upon a Scotiabank report on the tourism impact specifically of hockey and the value of sport uh, of that being 2.6 billion with the added benefit of 5,000 full-time jobs. The bottom left is a 2015 Statistics Canada report that indicates uh, a $2.5 billion value for the sporting and athletics goods industry in the country. And this reflects an 8.3% increase of that industry from 2010 to 2015. Finally, the bottom right is a recent claim that the black and gray market landscape of sport betting is valued at $14 billion, which given recent trends towards changes in legalization to legislate sport betting signals significant, might I say legal, sport betting business opportunities are on the horizon. So collectively, these sport industry, industry trends demonstrate the active economy is a growing cluster. This slide shares interesting data about an industry I'm less familiar with, but I appreciate uh, is a huge following among Canadians. A fairly recent Conference Board of Canada report notes the economic footprint related to fishing, hunting, trapping, and sport fishing is valued at 13.2 billion, involves over 100,000 jobs, and generates 6.4 billion in labor income. Certainly a slice of this industry activity connects to the active recreation or active life sectors of our cluster. That leads me to the example on the right. A recent news story cites a report that values the hunting and shooting sports industry in Canada at 8.9 billion and 1.9 billion in Ontario. Another interesting note of the story though, highlighted this Peterborough industry hub connected to hunting and shooting sports. That includes two manufacturers, three distributors, 25,000 square feet of industrial strength, four retail outlets, and 300 jobs. So an interesting exemplar as we look at what your community or specifically here in Niagara might be able to do in creating similar types of hubs that connect to the active economy. So to better understand the playing field where you might begin to identify connections to the cluster, I'm going to very briefly highlight four industry reports as a way to illustrate how industry growth trends connect to the six enabling clusters, uh, the six enabling sectors in the, the cluster. I will draw upon Finch and colleagues visual model here to demonstrate these connections by juxtaposing the industry trends to the model itself. A few notes though before I begin. I assume there are many direct connections with these five sectors in the delivery uh, cluster, given the report examines the sport industry. So I will hold off on discussing these uh, in detail at this time. 
I'm going to focus more on the connections with the six sectors in the enabling cluster because I believe this presents a very different way of thinking. Hence, I'll emphasize the potential during the recent, the next few slides of, of these trends and these six sectors. The first report is beyond our borders, where the European Union has been examining the economic e impact of sport for over a decade. A 2012 report identifies three growth areas shown here, sport nutrition, sport insurance, and economic and legal consultancy. When we take these areas of growth and connect them, the matrix looks a little messy, but I do that on purpose because I would like to have the visual impact of showing this cluster is very relevant to many trends out there in the sport industry. So, you know, for example, sport nutrition can connect closely to health and wellness, fit tech and accessories, active product gears and, and gear, for example. In this instance, um, you can see from a second report, very recent in 2022 by Deloitte that focuses upon the North American market. The report highlights five areas of growth related to crossover from the merging of physical and virtu virtual active experiences, uh, changes in the sport marketing landscape related to legislation giving athletes greater control over their naming images and likeness, um, NFTs as an area of uh, financial you know, revenue generation, sport betting, and the general movement of, of well-being and the desire for active recreation and active life throughout society. Here again, the connections are numerous. I've just highlighted a few here. For example, the merging of physical and virtual sport experiences can connect very quickly to active products and gear, media and content, and other areas of design and so on. The third example is a PwC uh, report on the North American market as well. It notes six expansion areas, sport media, again, with the sport betting, fan experiences, the large realm of data, and two additional unique areas related to social justice with diversity, equity, inclusion, and sustainability. Connections exist here, one of which I'd like to note that social justice with its push to engage more and more members of society in active living has a, a, you know, several connections to the sectors in the um, enabling cluster, such as active products and gear, health and wellness is also a very, very large opportunity. I'd also then like to come closer to home with some of these examples and look at Niagara's playing field. Um, Niagara Economic Development uh, identifies data around new sectors or emerging sectors in Niagara's economy. And these seven emerging sectors are listed here and highlight areas such as engineering, information technology, computer design, and most notably digital media. So if we look at how existing businesses and strong emergent sectors in Niagara might connect to a cluster on the active economy, the, the opportunities are also abundant. The digital media area would clearly connect to media and contact sec uh, content sector and professional services are very much connected to these other areas that are noted in Niagara. Further in Niagara, um, there's connections to uh, an on the employment side to the Niagara, uh, Niagara Workforce Planning Board report that notes tourism in Niagara employs approximately 36,000 residents and is widely recognized as a major sector in the region. It is also one of the sectors in the active economy through active tourism. Hence, the active economy model offers opportunity to support, support employment in tourism. The report considers different scenarios for how the pandemic may impact the tourism workforce. And one of these is a scenario where tourism jobs decline, but the workforce remains the same or increases. So giving us some thought um, in this case, new employment opportunities will be needed and working through active tourism sector of this cluster model into areas of professional services, media and content, health and wellness, for example, is a great way to promote the opportunities for professionals with tourism expertise 
to still seek employment in related sectors to tourism. So now that the act, active economy model has been explained and illustrations of the economic uh, cluster and how well it aligns with industry trends in sport and in Niagara have been shared, um, we are beginning to see how various pieces fit together in relation to the way sport can support economic development. So to close this presentation, I'll talk about where to go from here. And by this, I mean, you know, we need to ask ourselves, What's the game plan moving forward? I suggest this involve two steps. The first one is mapping the active economy in order to calculate the value, to determine the scope and to identify the impact. And this is key in my opinion. It's important to gather evidence about your regional active economy through data collection, analysis, and most importantly, public reporting. The second part of the game plan after mapping is mobilizing to generate a way forward for collaborative dialogue and sharing of existing evidence and initiatives by any and all stakeholders. So I'll just close with uh, talking about this a little further. So in addition to identifying the 11 sectors of the active economy cluster, Finch and his colleagues also provide guidance on how to measure the cluster in a region. For each of the 11 sectors, they provide an inventory of how to conduct an, added, um, an activities and outputs audit and um, provide example metrics such as total number of enterprises, total number of employees, and total economic impact. You can examine this overall for the cluster in your region, but also examine it by sector. And each of these can be me uh, measured through NAICS and NOCs and other calculations to determine dollar value of real and nominal GDP. So I'm going to briefly provide an outline of the research I am conducting in relation to Niagara's active economy. And while this focuses locally, um, I, I believe it's a great example that other attendees watching this video can apply in their communities in order to, to generate evidence building um, and follow this kind of approach. An important first step in my research is to measure the active economy value in Niagara and share these findings through a policy brief I'll work on with the Niagara Community Observatory. Additional follow-up though, will compare Niagara's active economy to other centers. So we can compare Niagara's performance in the, this unique cluster to Ontario overall in comparable centers such as Hamilton, London, and Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge. This research is underway and I'm excited to have the support of the Regional Municipality of Niagara Economic Development Office to obtain StatsCan data and to uh, help me with my analysis. Once the value of the active economy is understood and this evidence is shared, there is opportunity to work with specific economic industry and business associations or entities to dive deeper into the sectors and further demonstrate the connection of the active economy to these specific subsectors. I'm thinking here of organizations like Chamber of Commerce, Business and Improvement Associations, Workforce Planning Boards, and many more. Such educational resources could generate on an ongoing basis um, ways for stakeholders to connect across the 11 sectors and build interest. Speaking of these business-facing organizations, many currently conduct regular, regular research within Niagara that offers an opportunity to augment the af, um, active economy data. For example, I'm also fortunate to work with the Regional Municipality of Niagara's Planning and Development Services about the idea of adding a um, sport-related item or two to their annual Niagara Employment Inventory Survey. This annual data collection exercise, which involves over 10,000 businesses, could dovetail to capture sport-related information through a simple question of asking business owners, do you tap into this you know, vast sport marketplace, yes or no? And it would build out our understanding with additional business data of what the active economy looks like, in this case, in Niagara. Their survey was stalled due to the pandemic um, you know, impact on, and on everyone, but I hope to return to this dialogue uh, when the survey resumes and see if something like this can continue. And I'm confident there are many other surveys and data collection 
uh, activities being done on an annual basis within Niagara where data like this could be gathered in a similar way. Finch and his colleagues also identify a number of example metrics related to the five delivery sectors in the active economy. And um, these are really critical. For example, um, understanding sport in terms of number of participants is key or understanding active tourism based on account of events in a region is also quite insightful. And gathering this kind of information, which complements the economic data we've just discussed, is important, but it's very difficult because much of this activity exists within small local voluntary organizations. So recognizing this, um, I've been working on creating a Niagara Sport database. And in some ways, this type of database exists in other communities that have been active on the sport tourism front. But this one I'm building focuses on three pillars that captures data on sport events, sport facilities, and sport organizations in Niagara. And, you know, you know, in some ways this data has existed in the past. For example, previously Niagara did have a sport facilities inventory, but it's now quite outdated. And there are open access data sets on organizations connected to sport, culture, and recreation. But again, this is due for some updates. So overall, this summarizes the, the vast kind of picture on how to measure the active economy. So we'll now close at looking at how to mobilize this information and mobilize discussion about the active economy in your community. This is the second step of the game plan, and it's a great way to move forward and build collaboration on how these evidence and initiative steps can um, build enthusiasm. I will briefly address this by drawing on a document called Playbook 2030 by the Active City Collective in Calgary. I'd like to acknowledge that Calgary has done a tremendous uh, job in kind of building a process that engages stakeholders about the active economy and has built interest in their region and advocated quite well on policy advancement. Here is a visual illustration of their implementation path that includes six steps. I won't review all six, I'm just going to highlight uh, two of them for the sake of our discussion, as I feel these are quite effective ways to build community aware awareness that is um, quite easy to do. So the one area on the implementation plan that talks about refining evidence, we've already discussed. The whole first section of this presentation about measuring the active economy supports the notion that engaging in ongoing research analysis is an advantage. The second one though, looks at this square on engaging stakeholders. And in this, in this regard, I'm also trying to move forward with partners in Niagara. You know, um, I mentioned earlier that my mission is to build an active economy in Niagara and, and kind of work this model in Niagara. And I'm fortunate to be supported by business leaders serving on an advisory team who are going to help me host a Niagara Active Economy Summit. And stakeholders across different sectors of the cluster will speak and share their thoughts on how to enhance the active economy in order to increase competitive advantage for businesses and individuals in a region. Other mechanisms to drive um, innovative economic development actions via this model might include a community-led active economy advisory group, similar to what the um, Calgary community has with Active City Collective. Business roundtables staged by existing uh, community groups and associations that would build awareness about the sport industry, which isn't the typical go-to marketplace for many business owners out there. And including the active economy and economic development strategic planning exercises and discussions. And each of these can leverage the active economy evidence and facilitate shared learning and collaboration, which is key to adopting um, these strategies at organizational and individual levels. So in closing, I recognize we are each strained by COVID and its impact on our lives. And upon what we try to, to achieve in our professional roles to support businesses and individuals becoming more sustainable through the pandemic. There are many challenges in crisis management mode we currently operate may not leave much um, 
capacity for visioning new economic development strategies. But my hope is that today's session will plant a seed that you may consider the active economy when readiness permits. I will close with this comment by David Delia, head of PwC Sport Business Advisory, who published a great deal of sport industry reports. When referring to the pandemic and the prevailing pessimism of the crisis, he states, in general, this situation may favor the emergence of changes that have long been considered but never achieved to their full extent, whether it be hybrid sports, new revenue streams, drastic governance reforms, or enhanced collaborative models. You know, it is in this last area of collaborative models where I've added my own emphasis in red that I believe offers the greatest potential for a regional economy and its actors to best capitalize on growth that is evident in sport, recreation, and wellness. My focus, my work focuses on championing this, and I really encourage you to begin the conversation and look forward to ongoing discussion about this perspective. So again, here are my references, and I'm happy to share if anybody contacts me, and I'll now hand this over to Abdul. Thank you very much, Julie. It's a really exciting topic here to talk about and learn a little bit more, obviously, and, and well, especially in light of the COVID uh, restrictions, which has hampered many of the sporting activities uh, in this area. So one of, the, one of the questions that are coming up is, has COVID or will you, in, in, in once we are in the post-COVID era, in your view, will it likely lead to new category of sports being created? And if so, what they may be, and, in, and also then in terms of their impact on the economic development of, um, of, the, of the regions or the, sport, or, or the organizations that are bringing those about. Yes, thank, yes thank you for that question. So I think you mean by new category is new ways people will experience sport, recreation, and wellness broadly, and how they might consume sport and through those delivery clusters. And I, I do believe two things have come out of um, the COVID experience. One is the massive awareness of the priority for people to have recreation experiences, to have an equitable access to these kinds of experiences. And so you have this massive influx of people into this kind of marketplace of sport and recreation experiences. So that is one side of growth. And then as you have different consumers kind of entering the sport industry, along with the trends we've seen in the, in the presentation previously, it drives because you're looking at demand, the new ways people would like to consume these uh, goods and services. So yes, that will emerge um, with new kinds of sport products and, and all the other kinds of opportunities that develop along that supply chain. Excellent, thank you. In terms of the database that uh, you're referring to, then uh, uh, so there's, there's, there's a question there as I look to my other screen. And uh, do you think the Niagara Sports database can help form public policy supporting the active economy? Can you say that again? Sorry. What are your opinion in terms of the Niagara Sports database and how it can help from form public policy that supporting the active economy? Great question, because my hope is it will have a loop back to public policy in Niagara. So one of the things I always say about sport is from a policy standpoint, it's kind of everywhere, but it's nowhere, right? And when you come down into regional or municipal policy, um, it usually gets pigeonholed into the recreation part of a master plan or a strategic plan. At the federal level, sport is kind of exists within the Ministry of Heritage under a kind of Sport Canada department, which is all mostly about high performance sport, but it fans across industry, health, community services, all these other areas of policy. So if we can gather evidence about the sheer breadth of activity related to sport in Niagara from participation with the, the number of organizations that offer the services to events and how they're generating uh, economic activity in general, then this evidence can, can loop back to decision makers and other leaders across the sectors 
who do have a role in driving our economic strategy in Niagara. So evidence to me is gold. <laughs> For sure. You touched on the various stakeholders that are part of that exercise. And thinking about, uh, so, and, and, and then sort of linking a question here. So what are some of those, who are some of those stakeholders, some of the key stakeholders in creating linkage between economic development strategies and sport? So uh, the model actually also includes a section on stakeholders and the process that the Active City Collective in Calgary have gone through provides a wonderful template of who to engage. So stakeholders would include, as we've mentioned, policymakers. They would include participants in each of these sectors. And they would include um, other kinds of administrators who work in businesses, organizations, or as individuals in each of these different 11 sectors. So it's a little bit of a hub or a wheel image on connecting these different stakeholders and finding a way to engage them with each other. And that's what I think the summit or any kind of activity you could do in your community with these business groups uh, plays a role. You need to engage people, begin a conversation, and then try and provide the evidence in such a way that they feel it's a priority and want to move forward. Excellent. In thinking about the stakeholders, there's obviously the re region itself, university and other places. How do you see the region uh, adding to this? How do you see the university setting or, or the college perhaps as well, um, or any of the school boards adding to this uh, exercise uh, and enhancing economic development? A big piece of what um, the add-on could be is just giving um, legitimacy to the conversation. You know, the universities and colleges have many stakeholders, be they researchers, instructors, teachers, the whole academic side of what we do that can feed into the evidence side of the discussion on the active economy and identify its importance. I think from the region, when you say the region, I think the, the person submitting the question might mean the regional municipality. It has a, an, an economic development um, office that works, of course, with all the municipalities in the region. And if they are able to kind of hold some kind of round table, perhaps support this summit that would be community wide and very inclusive. And just as they're doing right now in, in regards to my work, help with the data, then um, the collaborative work, for example, that I can do with the region and others to get the word out. So I think they play an important role on evidence in facilitating discussion as the entity that spans the whole region, not just particular to a municipality, and um, looking to see how this could be an emergent or new sector or cluster in the Niagara's uh, economic plan. Yeah, and me, but I'm there. Um, Calgary obviously is uh, an important, has an important role perhaps here in some of the lessons that could be offered for Niagara. What are some of the lessons do you think that Calgary and other regions may offer as Niagara embarks on this path? Um, right, that, that's a great question. Um, my plan is to have Drs. Finch and Leg present at our Niagara Active Economy Summit to share their story and to show some best practices and lessons learned. I think, you know, Calgary is clearly a much bigger region than we are in Niagara, but their model is critical. And they started with a community engagement with the early in introduction of evidence. And that was a hook. It caught on and they built momentum across uh, stakeholders from all different sectors. They didn't stay pigeonholed just in sport or a narrow vision of sport. It all came about in Calgary because they lost the referendum on whether to submit a bid for the Olympics, the Winter Games. And after that happened, I think leaders in the community were caught off guard and thought they had really lost an opportunity to drive this community prosperity that um, is very multifaceted. It's not just economic, but social and, and human and environment as well. So from that, they mobilized. And I think for our lesson in Niagara, 
we, we can't afford to miss opportunity given the situation we're in for, in two instances. One is coming out of the pandemic. Every potential strategy to drive economic prosperity needs to be considered and has potential. And this is a new one that I think we need to give some consideration to. And second, and I didn't mention it in the presentation, but of course, Niagara is hosting the Canada Summer Games this year. And every time a community hosts a major games, it's, it's meant to have a catalytic effect. It's meant to have a legacy effect. And it can happen in many different ways. And for Niagara, I think having sport in the spotlight gives us a chance to build that momentum on a legacy side around the economic uh, gains that we can draw from sport, recreation, and wellness. Other communities do a great job too, Abdul, on um, gathering evidence around sport tourism in particular. London does extremely well, Durham as a region does extremely well, and how they go about gathering this evidence on sport community activity um, could be expanded out of just tourism to these other parts, like I mentioned in the database. And they make a point of investing on collecting that evidence and um, leveraging it really well to inform decision making. Excellent, thank you. Perhaps time for one more question here. Uh, so this speaks to cricket, and cricket is the fastest growing sport in Canada and the second largest sport in the world on TV. Just like GTA, Niagara Cricket Centre has seen tremendous growth attracting thousands of cricketers from across Canada. How can we access its impacts on the local Niagara economy and tourism? Right, so cricket's a sport I haven't watched much, but I'm absolutely um, shocked at, at its, its global span. And it's great to see it's growing in Canada and in Niagara. I have two pieces of advice on this. One is um, I've worked with clubs before on trying to take the events they host and generate some numbers, some values on the economic activity that arises from these tournaments or competitions that a local club hosts. And I don't mean this in terms of these large scale event economic impact models that calculate numbers, but simple ways to draw upon who you have coming into Niagara as part of the events your club hosts and what kind of value is, is generated from there. The second one is to, to look more internally in terms of your organization. And you, you spend money, you have expenditures um, to operate and keep the club moving, even though you may be primarily a voluntary organization, you still generate activity through expenditures. And it's interesting to look at what those are in general, what kinds of um, revenue you give to other businesses in order to operate and capture your impact as an organization on some of these other active economy clusters. So there's ways to do this and, and um, any volunteers or people that run a sport organization in Niagara or, or beyond um, could do this kind of activity. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Julie, for taking the time out of your busy schedule with all the activities and areas that you're involved with. And of course, the Canada Summer Game coming up within months being away and you're quite busy with, with that and a number of other things and taking the time to, to, to come here and, and speak to our audience. So thank you very much for thank your you. presentation today. Goodman Group is a community-focused learning and development services provider that works to support professionals, businesses, and entrepreneurs pursuing growth through professional development certificate programs, executive education, consulting services, and startup support. Goodman Group is pleased to offer a number of new programs. And on the screen, you will see details of the Next Gen Municipal Leadership Development Program, uh, which has been one of our uh, programs that has been one of our uh, a favorite amongst a number of organizations in Niagara and outside as well. Registration for this program and the details of that is on screen and registration is open now and that remains the case. In case of any questions, please feel free to reach out to the team here at Goodman Group using the contact information that's on the screen. Goodman Group is also pleased to share with you information related to uh, Canadian Business for Internationally Trained uh, professionals, uh, which is expected to start on, uh, in April and run through June. Uh, the information about this program is also on the screen 
And for registration and questions, please follow the link and see the information that's available on the screen, as well as what we have on our website. Uh, do, do reach out uh, with regards to information and our registration uh, to the team here at Goodman Group. And furthermore, Goodman Group is pleased to provide uh, and offer professional leadership development program uh, for businesses in Niagara. Uh, these uh, sessions are intended to start in, in spring, but registration for these are open now. And for any questions, once again, feel free to reach out to the team here uh, at Goodman Group. Well, that is all at the time that we have here today for this session of Business Previous. Thank you to you all for watching this session live and for those that may be watching the recording uh, at their convenience as well. Uh, joining me on the next session of Business Breeders is a panel of experts who will be addressing and focusing on the topic of real investment, something that's probably near and dear to many of our hearts, uh, those who are homeowners and those who are looking for paths to become one. I hope you can join us then. Until then, stay safe.